Where do you want to spend eternity? Deuteronomy 3019 King James Version I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. There have been many debates on where human beings go after they have passed on. We must have heard about reincarnation before. Some people believe that after we pass on, their spirit goes back into the body as a fetus and they are given birth to again. Some people have concluded that after someone passes on, the human spirit will be roaming about watching their loved ones. Some say these spirits will appear to many people in different forms. Many theories or explanations on where human beings go after they pass on has been given, but we Christians have one thing to hold on to, and that is the truth. The truth about where human beings go after they pass on has been given in the Bible, and that is the standard we are to follow. The Bible told us what will happen, and we see that in Hebrews 9.27 King James Version that, And it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Let people say what they want to say. The fact is that what comes after this life is judgment. This is the fact we must let the world know. Most people, including Christians, don't like it when it comes to the message of where you want to spend your eternity. Many Christians have gone deep into the messages of how to make money, how to turn 100 to a billion. They have gone deep into many sermons that will make them self-centered. This is the time that we need to speak the truth to ourselves. This is the time for us to reflect on where we are coming from and where we are going. Look at it like this. 100 years from now, where will you be? That dream car you have won't be so desirable then. Focus on your spirit man, the real you. Where will you be in eternity? This is the time to ask ourselves, where will we be spending eternity? This life is so short, very short, that in 100 years from now, many people who are alive now will not be. But there is a time that has no end. There is a time when you will never think of the end, and that will start after this life on earth. This eternity, where would you love to spend it? You will hear many people say they need to solve the problems they have right now on earth. What they need is to prepare for the battles they will face right now. I have bills to pay. I have mouths to feed. I have to maintain the same standard of living. I have battles I need to face now. While you are preparing for the earthly battles, are you preparing for the judgment? Are you preparing for eternity? You cannot fight these earthly battles till eternity. They will stop. They are programmed to stop at a time in your life, but are you prepared for eternity? This is the time for us to wake up. We need to start telling ourselves the truth. We need to start warning ourselves of the dangers attached to forgetting about eternity. This is one of the devil's greatest tactics. He puts people in the false sense of security as if they will live forever. But all the while time is moving. Time is slowly but surely moving. They don't realize that each second that passes, each minute that passes, they are moving closer to an appointment. They are closer to the day of judgment. Hebrews 9.27 And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this judgment. What the devil does is get people so absorbed in the cares of the world. They are trying to buy a big house, a better car, the newest designer bag, a bigger wedding, working longer and longer hours and putting their relationship with God at the back burner. But the Bible gives every man and woman a great warning. Isaiah 55, 6, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him when he is near. This suggests that there will come a time in every single person's life where God will not be found, where God will not be accessible, a time where repentance won't be available, a time where the mercies of God will not be available. There is no repentance in hell. There is no seeking God in hell. Now is the time, whilst there is still air in your lungs, listen to the gospel. There is indeed a great deception setting in the world today, and the Bible tells us this in 2 Corinthians 4.4. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. 
This verse tells us that there's someone who is the God of this world, and we all know he is the devil, and he is actively blinding people's minds to the light of the glorious gospel. And he is doing this by getting people to be only concerned with the here and the now. People don't care about eternity, but they should. You should care about your eternity. Focus on things that are eternal. Is your job going to affect your eternity? Is that man or woman you are chasing going to send you to heaven or hell? Is the love you have for money going to send you to heaven or to hell? Do not be deceived. We need to start telling ourselves the truth. Many preachers don't want to hurt their church members or let them go away from the church. And then they start twisting the scriptures. They start preaching interesting motivational topics that would be forgotten in a few days. We need to start preaching on the reasons why Jesus came to this earth. There are two places where human beings will spend eternity, either heaven or hellfire. If we are not conversant with the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus was talking to his followers about two places that man will spend eternity, and we will look at his words carefully. Matthew 5, 17 through 22. In verse 17, Jesus established the fact that he did not come to earth to destroy the laws that have been given through Moses or the prophets. It was never the work of Jesus to destroy those laws, and that means they are still being used in the sight of God. They are valid, and the punishments that were given are still valid. Matthew 5.20, King James Version says, For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Jesus gave what is needed to enter heaven. Righteousness is what will get you to enter the kingdom of God. Without righteousness, that means you are going to another place. And where is that place? In Matthew, Jesus mentioned the second place. It says, But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment, and whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, will be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. This is Jesus himself preaching about hellfire. Why would anyone want to enjoy this earth and risk losing heaven? Mark 8, 36, For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? People can say whatever they want, that these places aren't real. They can say that God is not real. That will never change anything. It will never change the fact that the Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. God is real. And one day, we will all stand before him and start to give account of how we have lived our lives. This is a day in which we cannot avoid. It doesn't matter if you run to the east or to the west, you will stand before him. You will come before his judgment seat. You cannot outrun a God who can speak whole worlds out of nothing. It's nothing to him to raise the dead and to bring them to the judgment seat that they may speak to him about the way that they've lived and thought and spoken and acted. And God, the great king and the only potentate guarantees that every evil word will be remembered. Every evil deed will be accounted for. Every evil action will be recorded. Every evil act will be called to account. Every evil thought will be published openly everything will be published openly. We don't know how long this day will be because we will be in eternity. So if God chooses, he could go through the life of all the billions of people that have ever lived and go through each of their lives at its present speed. So it could take 24 hours to examine 24 hours. Just think how different we would live our lives if we had this idea in our minds that God will one day examine every second of every minute, of every hour, of every day, of every week, every month, of every year, of every decade, of every century. I am asking you to live in such a way that you know you will have to give account one day of your life. If we thought about eternity more often, we would love our neighbors more. We would love one another. If the idea that one day I will be judged for my actions lives at the forefront of our minds, 
we would not commit some of the sins that we keep. If the idea that one day I will be judged for my actions, we would not hold grudges as long as we do. So I ask you today, are you holding a grudge against someone? Is that grudge worth it? My friend, the only thing that matters is eternity. So what if that person hurt you? 100 years from now, you will be with God and it will be a distant memory. Forgive others if you want forgiveness from God. You have to. You have to forgive others. Don't pursue revenge. Don't pursue vengeances. The Bible tells us clearly that we are to pursue two things. Pursuing these two things will guide us into heaven. Hebrews 12, 14, pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Pursue peace with all men is living love. I encourage you today to live out each day knowing that one day I will be in eternity, and the actions I make now will reflect in my eternity.